This video documentary is produced by HelpAge International with funding support from the European Commission on Humanitarian Aid and Civil Protection, ECHO. Anchored in the Caribbean Sea, Jamaica is prone to major natural hazards such as hurricanes, storms, floods, landslides, droughts, and earthquakes. In fact, Jamaica is located in the Hurricane Alley, giving it the unenviable position as one of the most vulnerable countries in the world to natural disasters. Much of the island's economic and social infrastructure is located along coastal areas, putting some of its most vital assets at risk. Factors such as chronic poverty, inadequate urban planning, poor environmental management and weak infrastructure aggravate the potential for catastrophic disaster situations. The increasing frequency and intensity of natural hazards in the region, climate change effects and the recurring catastrophic losses of human lives and economic assets have rendered the situation a costly and deadly problem. Between 1980 and 2008, Jamaica experienced 27 natural disasters with damage estimated at 2.6 billion US dollars and a death toll of more than 200 people. These devastating challenges to Jamaica's national development have forced the Jamaican government to make disaster risk reduction a national priority. As part of its overall development framework, the Government of Jamaica adopted the Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management Act in 1993, which promulgated a comprehensive model of disaster management, functioning at three levels, national, parish and community. This approach sees the integration of disaster management into the overall national planning and development process and it intends to facilitate linkages leading to partnership and greater collaboration between key environment and development stakeholders. There is greater national recognition and increased awareness of the gravity of Jamaica's vulnerability to a multiplicity of hazards and the serious implications of this for sustainable development. Furthermore, given the reality of increasing vulnerabilities, national asset exposure, and the importance of enhancing wider stakeholder engagement, we have anchored disaster risk reduction and the climate change adaptation agenda within the National Development Strategy Framework for Jamaica, called Vision 2030. Responding to the national call to build disaster resilient communities, a disaster risk reduction project was developed by Help Aid International in partnership with the Jamaica Red Cross and the European Commission on Civil Protection and Humanitarian Aid, ECHO. Under this disaster risk reduction project entitled Helping Vulnerable Communities and Populations to Manage Risks Associated with Hurricanes and Floods, 10 communities in the parish of St. Catherine were targeted for intervention. They are Browns Hall, Content, Giblator, Gregory Park, Princesfield, Riversdale, Riverley, Springvale, Thompson Pen, and Waterford. The communities selected have been among the worst in the parish affected by flooding, wind, and rain damage from hurricanes in previous years. Successive hurricanes, Ivan in 2004, Hurricane Dean in 2007, and Hurricane Gustav in 2008 have damaged homes, crops, livelihoods, and have led to the loss of human lives. Even now, some of the residents have not been able to recover. My name is Melvin Grant. I'm living in Bullock Mountain District. Well, um, at, when Gilbert did come, uh, my house had blow off and everything gone. My bed wet up mattress gone. And I never get any help. I never get any help. So now Sandy come back, my house had blow off, my kitchen gone. My bathroom gone, I have like a fall cube and it gone, everything blew off and it host up and the mattress wet up. Come along to the books for the children to go to school. It wet up and everything gone. I am Michael Coburn. The farm blew down every banana, every planting. We yam them and heat them up together like so. I put them in heat and blow them up and, and I say it go. A key preliminary activity of the project was a knowledge, aptitude and practice survey conducted among residents in the 10 target communities. 
The CAP survey revealed that there was a general lack of knowledge on how to prepare for and to respond to a natural disaster. Furthermore, it indicated that while more than 90% of the residents knew the potential damage that natural hazards could cause, less than 50% of them knew what to do before, during and after a disaster. The survey suggested a major contributing factor to the inaction by many residents when exposed to hazard risks was the general lack of information on existing emergency measures and resources in and around these communities. The data showed that 50% of the residents were not aware of any community shelters, 82% were not aware of any early warning systems, and 94% did not know whether any disaster plans were in place for their communities. Tell you the truth, um, I never know that Sunday coming. I never know that Sunday was coming because I, um, I went out to bar walk. The, the, about three days before, and I when I come in in the taxi, I get to understand that storm is coming. And I hear the, the, the driver in the car talking about storm. And he said to him, say, storm I come, and he said, because I never, I don't have a radio, I don't have a TV to hear. You understand? So at that time, I find out the storm coming. So I never really prepare, you understand, to meet the storm. I never really prepared to meet this time. The project assessment identified the need to place priority on raising community awareness of disaster mitigation measures and building the capacities of residents to prepare, respond, and recover from a natural disaster. Central to the process of strengthening community resilience is increasing awareness. This involves challenging misconceptions and false beliefs about natural disasters and highlighting the role of the community and the responsibility of all its constituents in reducing disaster risks. To this end, several information fairs have been held throughout the year and the annual disaster symposium and information fair was staged to sensitize residents in the target communities about disaster risk reduction. Under the theme Embracing Climate Change Realities, Building Disaster Resilient Communities, the symposium brought together local officials, key decision makers from government agencies, stakeholders from non-governmental and community-based organizations, educators, students, older persons and the disabled. Approximately 600 adults and children from across the parish were in attendance. We really should learn enough and know enough that for our entire existence, we've been a people living with these kinds of hazards among us, around us, through our disaster people. And the entire shaping of this country and the beauty of this country is born out of that natural interaction between our hazard and our location and our people. So no, no need to be afraid. What we should do is embrace the realities, embrace the realities. The DIPECO project was officially launched in October 2011 on the International Day for Disaster Risk Reduction. More than 8,000 people across the 10 St. Catherine communities have benefited from the intervention, either directly or indirectly through training, public education, advocacy, formation of strategic partnerships with state entities such as the Portmore Municipal Council, the Parish Disaster Committee, the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, the Jamaica Red Cross, the European Commission on Civil Protection and Humanitarian Aid, ECHO, as well as the project's main implementing partner, the St. Catherine Community Development Agency, SACTA. All 10 communities have received assistance in community capacity building through training, community mobilization, resource funding, and implementation of disaster risk management plans. Primarily, the project sought to identify, protect, and increase the capacities of the most vulnerable groups within these communities, children, older people, and the disabled, who are often the most at risk in disaster situations. Older persons are often at a disadvantage because many of them have limited mobility and muscle strength, impaired sight and hearing, and higher rates of chronic illnesses. With physical challenges and in many instances where they face chronic poverty and isolation, older people face even greater risks of certain death, starvation, and the onset of mental illness when disasters strike. 
HelpAge International is involved in disaster management because we recognize that older people are excluded and their special needs are not taken into consideration when it comes to disaster preparedness or when it comes to response and recovery activities. And one of our objectives is to bring them into the mainstream, to get them fully integrated into the disaster management process. And so the projects that we do um, bring them to the forefront so that um, they are specially recognized at the community level. And organizations that are involved in disaster management at the parish and national level take these concerns that older people have into consideration. There is a, a close connection between poverty and the impact of disasters on populations. Many older people are poor. Um, they live in rural areas. They, they, they do not have the capacity to prepare for disasters in terms of ensuring that their houses are intact. Um, hurricane straps. In a, in a lot of cases, the houses are very poor in terms of being able to withstand a category one, category, one, category two, category three hurricane. So in the, the houses are in poor conditions, that's one. Secondly, they cannot put the necessary measures in place in terms of stocking up food and, and so on um, to prepare for disasters. They, they, they cannot um, take care of the, the, the cutting of trees and, and you know, doing all the, the necessary things that will mitigate the impact of the disaster because they do not have the wherewithal to do it. So poverty is a very important factor in terms of reducing the risk that older people face where disasters are concerned. When we heard about Hurricane Sandy, we were very concerned about the older people who can't help themselves in the community. So we decided to go around to Lando Avenue where there was an old lady by the name of Irene Buchanan. She lived alone and when we went there, she was in a very deplorable condition. Our hearts ache when we went there to see how she was living. The only place in her house that was not leaking was a little spot over her bed. We wanted not to leave her, but at that time we didn't have anywhere to put her. So we had was to leave. So the next day during the hurricane, we went back and we took her out, we give her a bath, we give her something to eat, we take her to the doctor to give her a checkup and everything like so on and we make sure that she was okay because she's 82 years old, she don't have nobody living with her, she alone living there, nobody to help her and we were very thankful and glad for the train that we got because if it wasn't for that training, we would know what would happen to that lady. One of the things that um, you find when you, when you develop community disaster response teams and you get them, make them aware of some of the special needs that older people have, they tend to look out for them. They tend to know where they live. In the event of a disaster, they go and check on them to see that they are okay. If they need to be moved from where they are, they, they, they are moved and so on. My name is Audrey. I'm from the River Lake community and I am one of the response team who go around and take care of the elderly. Whenever time they, they are sick, I always went to the hospital collect the medication. Normally I get up from 3, 4 o'clock to go to the hospital, collect the medication, come back, give it to them. I see that they have food to eat, comb their hair, bathe them, and such for it. Well, one of the main things I have seen as challenges for a for whole of persons that most of them are not taken care of. Like, there's not a relative who, whether children, or some other relative, there's nobody to say, well, I'll fall in and make sure this is done. You will go and you'll visit a older person and the state that they're in, the first thing they say, I'm hungry. And if I have my mother or somebody, you want to think, why shouldn't that person have somebody to give them some breakfast? And then you feel helpless because you can't afford to give. 
because they have no means of doing so. I learned to prepare for disaster. I learned what to do in time of disaster. And as my role in the rescue team, I'm the one who go around and see if everything is running smoothly, get the necessary people out of the community that needs to go into the shelter, get the um, vulnerable people out of ways of damage and stuff like that. Let them prepare for the, especially if there's a flood watch or there's a flood warning. Residents were consulted and invited to participate in the formulation of the community disaster plans. Older persons with their wealth of experience and knowledge about the communities they live in were seen as key informants in the consultation process. Older people have a lot of information to provide to the disaster management process. They have been around. They know when we have had all of these hurricanes. They know the kind of damage that, that have come as a result of these hurricanes. They know where flooding has taken place. They, they, they know what are the best evacuation routes out of a community. And all of this information is not taken into consideration. Um, when mitigation um, activities are taking place, they are not brought into the process. And so, for example, you find that an older person might say, if you, you need to raise the road here so that the water will not flood into the different areas, um, things like that, because they know what happens if, if you have an unusual um, type of activity where, where you have excessive rainfall and so on. With on-the-ground facilitation and coordination by SACTA, a community-based organization working in the parish of St. Catherine, community members were recruited as volunteers to participate in training in several areas, including vulnerability capacity assessment, peer support training in the care of older persons and persons with disabilities, basic emergency telecommunications, shelter management, and light search and rescue training. Overall, more than 120 residents from the 10 project communities received training and certification under the project. I am more than satisfied. I, I, think, that, I think that over the years we have, um, we have received uh, what I can call full support from community residents. I, initially, I know that disaster project is not one that people really love and appreciate as though they would love something that has to do with income generating. Because in community we discover that people are always more receptive to the income generating project, mainly because you know they're going to get something in their hand. Um, disaster risk is more is more educating, talking, informing and stuff. But I think because of the nature of this disaster project it wasn't it was kinda easy to implement. Because if you look at meeting like today you call people, people would come out because you know they come, they could they could um, voice their opinions, they talk about their experiences. So it was it was like sharing and stuff and of course with the training component the members of the communities look forward to be going out on a different training because they were taken out to places and of course it was kind of an incentive for them to go out to these trainings so of course it was very very easy to mobilize people in the community to get them of course um, to support the project. I found that when you assist persons that are unable to do things for themselves you get a sense of purpose, a sense of joy that you don't get by doing other jobs. Giving your time and effort to helping people gives me, I don't know about other persons, but for me, giving my time and effort, it gives me a joy that I don't get otherwise. Complementing the training was the formation of 10 community emergency response teams one for each project community. The community emergency response teams are responsible for the future coordination of preparation and response activities within each community. Working in conjunction with the parish disaster coordinator, the teams will undertake preparation activities when a hurricane storm or flood warning has been issued. In addition, the teams will lead coordination and response activities in the respective communities liaising with the residents, maintaining key contacts, securing the community's assets, mapping, identifying and assisting vulnerable groups within the community. Another key feature of the project 
was the issuing of family disaster plans that required participation of all members of individual households to discuss and make preparations for a potential disaster. I did not have a disaster plan, family disaster plan in place, but because of the training that we realized that we really need a disaster, family disaster plan where we work with our family to let them know exactly what are some of the things that we should do if there is a disaster. My flashlights, my medication, things, you know, I get those in, in place. We, we, we decide as to where, if in case there's a disaster in our home, where would we go? We have that in place where we say we'd go to the school we are for shelter. As part of its micro mitigation activities, a community flood warning system was installed at two sections of the Rio Kobe River, which affects the Riverley and Thompson Penn communities. A flood gauge and siren alarm system were installed in both communities to forecast and forewarn residents of impending floods. The system is designed to provide maximum lead time for the evacuation of persons that are likely to be affected by flood conditions and to coordinate the community response efforts. So many people live near the riverbank and sometimes if we people in the community did have a thing like this, the gauge and the alarm, made it, it, it would be better for us, we would have lost so many things and sometimes most of us get washed out by the time we hear the river come up and we try to take out two something by the time we go back everything gone so this is a thing where we can um, work off of. The alarm system it is very beautiful not only beautiful it does good to us we can actually sleep nights now knowing that we don't have to really stand up and watch when we hear the alarm sound off if it does we know that we should be prepared to get ready to go out. Emergency equipment and supplies donated to the response teams is intended to assist the recovery and response process. We have benefited a whole lot because one in one of the communities, Riverly, we have the infirmary that is within that community and you know it's mainly the elderly that is in that. So HealthAge has given us equipment to assist in ensuring that the residents and by extension the community is better equipped to deal with emergencies. So we received a mega generator for the infirmary, we got um, fire extinguishers, we installed a, an alarm system for the infirmary. A major activity of the project is the development of a country document on disaster risk reduction. The document will design the program framework to determine the country's disaster preparedness and risk reduction action plan from 2013 onwards. It will reflect the different types of hazards and risks, the level of preparedness of the country, and the extent to which disaster risks have been reduced in Jamaica. In all of this, what we are seeing is that disaster risk reduction is everybody's responsibility. The individual at the household level, the community, the local government authorities, the, the sectoral agencies, the, the different government ministries, the civil society, organizations, NGOs, and the coordinating mechanism for disaster management in the country. Everybody has to play a part. If we are going to be resilient in terms of reducing the risk associated with disasters.